Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys just briefly about something that uh, I very much believe in. I have observed this in myself, observed this in clients, uh, you know, always kept up with all of the nutritional science data. And that is the, the idea that generally speaking, your body composition and your athletic performance are going to tend to be better if your diet is built around carbohydrates as your primary source of calories. Okay, now we know that this is the case, that this is what produces the best longevity and health. Uh, and I want to be clear, I am not saying uh, substantial protein intakes are not beneficial here for particularly for gaining muscle. They absolutely are. Okay, absolutely are. So I'm not saying that. I'm not saying healthy fats cannot have a role because they absolutely do. Uh, in fact, there's actually pretty good data on uh, higher polyunsaturated fat intakes in general uh, show being linked with better body composition. In other words, more, slightly more muscle, slightly less fat. So I want to be I want to be clear there. And no, it has nothing to do with it needing to be marine based or fish oil. It's even even plant based, and it's both uh, omega three and omega six. There, there is a significant correlation between uh, reasonably high intakes of those and better body composition. And, and we know the pathways by which that most likely occurs, right? It's usually to do with the improved insulin sensitivity. Uh, but uh, all of that aside, higher carbohydrate diets tend to produce the best body composition because they limit fat usually. They limit saturated fat, and and I think that's a big one for a lot of people because for so many years there was the whole oh we can bulk on whole legs, bulk, bulk on uh, eggs, whole milk, all these things, right? And that does work, but the thing is that is serious bulking usually. In in other words, unless that is what you require to reach a calorie surplus, and you have a very small calorie surplus, that also leads to to accumulating more total body fat that also oftentimes leads to less than ideal insulin sensitivity over long periods of time. And I want people to keep in mind that many of the athletes and lifters who, who have bulked in this manner did so, number one, in an era where they didn't have all the refined foods we have, right? So they didn't have all the junk food we had. That was really how they got access to higher calories. Uh, number two, they weren't always ripped. You know, keep that in mind. They were not necessarily lean. A lot of them were at higher body weights, higher body fats. So just pointing that out for people, you know, so if we're talking body composition, that isn't necessarily the best approach, okay? It is a great way to gain a lot of muscle and a lot of strength and a lot of body weight, and it will work. But if we're talking about optimizing performance, we're talking about optimizing body composition, uh, not so much. Now, keeping in mind, there is something to be said for, for empty calories uh, for performance for endurance athletes, but they're still usually not drinking tons of milk to do that. It still tends to be carbohydrate-based and then certain um, the focus on other types of fats. Again, polyunsaturated fats in that context actually make a lot of sense, uh, even, even refined ones for the endurance athlete. But again, different topic, right? Different topic. Uh, but yeah, carbohydrates, it limits our, our accumulation of body fat while giving us a, a very anabolic source of calories. Uh, because at the end of the day, what people have to remember, dietary fat itself probably isn't particularly anabolic, right? Not to muscle tissue and definitely not to the degree that uh, carbohydrates or protein are, okay? Definitely not to the degree that carbohydrates and protein are, uh, and again, I want to be clear, relatively high protein intakes are absolutely linked with, with better muscle growth. Okay? They're absolutely linked with better muscle growth. But in general, if our diet uh, is, is centered around carbohydrates as a primary fuel source, primary calorie source, then protein is a secondary and fat is a third, hopefully with a focus on healthy fats, in general, body composition tends to be optimized. It tends to be better. If we're gaining weight, our ratios of lean versus fat tissue tend to be higher. Okay, Our overall training performance tends to be higher. We can handle more high output uh, training activity. 
we tend to have better glycogen stores in our muscles, which can again itself be, be potentially anabolic, right? And it's not that we burn through that much glycogen during actual lifting, and I want people to, to understand that. In terms of lifting itself, you, we don't burn that many carbohydrates, right? We don't burn that many carbohydrates because we don't burn that many calories itself lifting. But what we are looking at is things like uh, glycogen storage, right? We are looking at things like uh, nutritional factors involved with uh, transport of things into the, into the cell, okay? Carbohydrates are more insulinogenic, and insulin is extremely anabolic to muscle tissue, extremely anabolic to muscle tissue and not so much to fat tissue. Uh, again, a bit of a misnomer there. In, in other words, carbohydrate and protein are not being shoveled into your subcutaneous fat uh, to any significant degree in, in humans, okay? So, so again, that's not what our concern is there. It's that if insulin is elevated, we're burning less fat. Well, that's obviously not necessarily good for fat loss, but it doesn't mean you're going to gain more fat. So again, uh, the higher fat diets are absolutely linked to, to accruing more body fat. Right, both in the liver as well as uh, subcutaneous. So we come back over to the, the point of if we're eating very high carbohydrate, we probably are not eating very much saturated fat. So again, we are, we are back over to optimizing everything. Uh, and and that, that's what we want. We want the, the large anabolic response. We want the large hormonal response from a higher carbohydrate diet. And the beauty of that sort of diet is if, if fat is kept more moderate, particularly if it's, it's fats that are more oxidized as fuel easier, such as uh, PUFAs, we tend to not store as many excess calories. They tend to get burned off as extra body heat. They tend to get burned off uh, through thermic effect, through neat things like that, if we, we start getting into a calorie surplus. So again, we tend to accrue less body fat. And ultimately, it may result in us needing to eat more total calories because, again, it increases calories out. But again, the response tends to be as long as insulin sensitivity is high uh, due to good diet, not eating a bunch of garbage, uh, keeping activity levels high, highly trained muscle tissue, right? As long as that's occurring, that hormonal response is, is actually extremely useful for the ability to help build more muscle tissue and, again, improve general body composition. Uh, so my recommendations tend to be carbohydrates first, protein second, dietary fat third, with an emphasis on healthy fats for the fat that you do take in. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.